Jack Parker deal with the ass whipping I'm going to give you in the ring. If you want to step up to play team, bring it on. Because I forgot to take my medication in the morning and I'm in a real bad mood. What's up, people? TSHU, Train So Hard University, back with another video. Before we go any further, make sure you hit that like and sub button. Alright, people, this video is going to be about WWE former great Ahmed Johnson. Now, if you're an 80s baby like myself, you probably remember watching WWE, WCW, all that other good shit back in the mid to late 90s. Now, <clears throat> The WWE obviously is full of massive physiques, chisel physiques, muscular physiques. And on top of that, some of the best athletes actually perform in the WWE. Now that I have actually competed in bodybuilding, my opinion and point of view of physiques now is totally different than it was back then. When I look at them, I'm not really as impressed as I was as, was as a kid. You know, once you take your body to an, another level, you look back on some of the cats that you looked up to and they don't even compare. Now, I'm not putting myself in the same league as him. I'm just meaning in general. So let me stop rambling and go ahead and get into it. Ahmed Johnson. Could Ahmed Johnson have been a bodybuilder? That's what we want to focus on today. Now, first, we're going to start off how he built his foundation. Middle, middle linebacker. University of Tennessee Volunteers and Dallas Cowboys middle linebacker from 1990 to 1991. Now just by looking at him you can obviously tell that physically he's genetically gifted but that isn't all you need. Now when you hear stories about Ahmed Johnson one of the main consistent things that come up is the fact that he didn't take the preparation seriously as far as I guess choreographing the, the matches, um, the training, and all that stuff. Because, be real, he was muscle-bound with, you know, I guess without having to put in any effort. But now transitioning that to bodybuilding, everybody that steps on the stage is going to have muscle. Everybody's going to have muscle, but the detail means a lot more. Now, we sit back and we watch guys like the Ultimate Warrior. No, he wasn't stage shredded, but he was shredded for WWE, and look at a lot of the wrestlers now. Um, well, not now, but more so back in the early 2000s and all of the 90s. Those guys were shredded. So first, let's just focus on the frame. Wide frame. Doesn't necessarily have a blocky waist. Um, it's like it's equally proportioned back in the day. Um, again, not too shredded, but as far as having that canvas that you need, you have, he has the tools to, well, he did have the tools to actually be able to, if he was to diet all the way down and lean all the way out, he probably would be a very impressive bodybuilder. Now, the one downfall to trying to compare a, a wrestler to a bodybuilder is just for the fact that they're either wearing long pants or if they're wearing, um, I'm just causing po po posing trunks. If they're wearing that, they're wearing long pants or trunks, it's difficult to really be able to tell what the legs look like because they're wearing so much equipment. Most guys that wear the trunks, they're wearing like knee pads and stuff like that. So you really can't tell what the lower body actually looks like. But just going off just a full frame, I could see somebody being able to do some real damage on the stage. Um, but the main thing with him was he really didn't take care of himself. He didn't take training serious take a diet serious and obviously within bodybuilding that's what actually counts that's what means the most because everybody's going to have muscle but what would you do to separate yourself from the rest of them now when we take a look at the chest huge chest um shoulders traps he's got that width he has that wide back he has that arms we really can't tell because back at that time just like with the ultimate warrior he would have the 
the bands tied around his biceps to make it seem like it's peaking. So to, to give you the illusion that they're actually bigger than what they really are. Now, even if his arms are smaller than what they actually look like with the bands tied around them, they're still relatively impressive. So as far as every upper body part he would have. Um, now, will he be able to actually put it all together you know, and actually be lean enough to step on the stage? I doubt it, but you know, it's just something interesting, interesting to think about. But just use your imagination. And if this guy was to actually put in effort, there's no telling how good he could have been, how good he could have looked, how far he could have taken it. Um, you know, it's sad to see, you know, where he is right now. Obviously, you can see it in this picture. He's falling way off. And this is what normally happens to guys that are blessed genetically and really don't have to put in effort at a younger age. Because when your body starts to change as you get older, you don't know how to prevent certain things because everything just came so easy to you. You could eat whatever you want, party however long, however much you wanted to, do whatever drugs you wanted to, and it wouldn't phase you. But as you get older and you still think that you can do the same thing, this is what happens. So I think a lot of times people take their genetics and gifts for granted. And, um, and you know, just totally just let everything go. Look at him. He has to be about a good, I'm going to give him mid-300s, 350 plus. And I think he's in his, in his 50s. So obviously this isn't, isn't healthy for him to be looking like this, being that size. But as far as when he was in his prime, hella potential. But he still didn't take advantage of it. Make sure you hit the like and the sub button. TSA Chew, train so hard, university. Till next time, I'm out.